Hi everyone, my name is Naomi Hardell and I am the STEM and Science subject matter expert for School Specialty and I am back to talk about some instructional tools that you can use to support that remote and distance learning. The first tool that I want to talk about is called Flipgrid and um, there are a ton of my educator friends that I've seen on Twitter using this tool so it's one I wanted to share here today. I have not used it personally uh, so just a heads up but I have, like I said, a ton of friends. People are just raving about it on Twitter, so I wanted to share it with you. So this is a free social learning communication platform, uh, and it's simply it's a, a way to foster uh, short video discussions on classroom topics, basically. And how it works is educators create grids, which are the meeting place for your class. And in those grids, basically, you can start with like an icebreaker or um, a weekly reflection, uh, start, uh, you know, share book talks, explore STEM principles, um, really just give many presentations and, and so much more within this within the grid that you're creating. And then what happens is your students can then share their ideas, their stories and work in short video recording. So it's all done via video. So your students will need some type of device that they can record. Um, and basically, it's you know they can focus on the assigned topic and and, and share what they know within that app. Uh, it can be integrated with Remind, which is a program I've talked about previously, Google Classroom, uh, Microsoft Teams as well, which are pretty cool. Uh, the bonus is that it's 100% free for educators. Uh, so if you want to learn more, check it out at info.flipgrid.com uh, to check out more. The second tool of that I want to talk about is called Edpuzzle. Uh, and this is a pretty cool one too. So Edpuzzle is a web-based interactive video tool that lets users crop existing online uh, videos that have been created, whether it's from like YouTube or Khan Academy, Crash Course, anything like that. You could take those already pre-existing videos, crop them, edit them, and add the content to uh, your specific learning uh, objectives and outcomes. Uh, as a teacher, you can track if your students are watching the videos that you've created and um, assign them however many times you need to. You can also add your own voice and narration uh, and any questions you can have to the video. So it's an instructional tool as well as it could also be an assessment tool. Um, they have the ability for you to record your own video and upload it as well. So you don't have to use the videos that are up there on the internet, but there's some really great ones out there that it allows you to use and edit um, for your needs. So that's Edpuzzle. So edpuzzle.com to check out more. The third one is Screencastify. I have used this one personally. Um, and basically, in a nutshell, Screencastify uh, can be used to easily record, edit, and share videos. Uh, it's a Google Chrome uh, browser extension. So this you do need to use a specific browser for this one, and that is Google Chrome, um, which, I'll be honest, I'm a fan of Google Chrome. It's my favorite browser to use. So if, you have, if you're not using Google Chrome and you're still using Internet Explorer, change it up, use Google Chrome. I think it's one of the best ones out there. But I'm a little biased. I just like it. Anyway, so it's a Chrome browser extension. You add it on that way and it allows you to basically, you click a button and it records your screen. So pretty cool. Uh, you can record full or partial lessons, uh, record assignments and solutions and explanations to specific things, um, provide verbal uh, student feedback as well, which is also nice because when we can't be there with our students in person, um, just writing and typing things out is gonna be difficult for our students to understand. Sometimes you don't get tone just by reading something. Uh, so allowing us to do voiceovers on certain assignments, different things like that is key. So Screencastify basically helps uh, your students hear your voice, which is um, pretty important. Uh, and it's great for speech and language practice as well for your students. Uh, it integrates with Google Drive and Google Classroom. Key right there. Uh, so to learn more, just go to screencastify.com and I'll tell you all about how you can add it and check it out. The fourth and final tool that I have is called We Video, and I used this way back when I was teaching uh, and when it was kind of in its early phases of being created. Uh, so with We Video, you can basically empower students to create and uh, collaborate very easily uh, on videos, podcasts, slideshows, and more. So it's not just videos, even though it says We Video, you could do other things with it too. Uh, you can use any device, including a uh, Chromebook, Windows, Mac, uh, and any mobile devices that you have. You can edit on the go uh, with mobile apps for Android and iOS. It is also cloud-based, um, so it has the flexibility and gives you really unlimited storage uh, for your media. There's no download or software to install, which is also key um, because we don't want to be sending a ton of things home for our students to be using uh, and trying to figure out brand new on their own or, or you know, parents struggling to figure this out. So we want something that can be very easily 
easy to use uh, without having to download a ton of things. I love that students can create and edit uh, videos, podcasts, live shows, and more together, and that projects can be exported to Google Classroom, Schoology, uh, sorry, Schoology, uh, Canvas, and even Class Link. So a couple of those uh, LMS platform tools. Uh, they're also offering free WeVideo school accounts to schools who are closing due to COVID-19. So they're really out there to support you all as educators. So to learn more, go to wevideo.com. So there are obviously other great uh, instructional tools out there to help deliver that content for you uh, in, in the best and, and most meaningful way possible. There are other programs like Nearpod, um, Pear Deck, uh, and even Explain Everything. Uh, you just have to check them out. So hopefully today you've learned a couple different tools that you can go and check out, uh, some which I've gone into detail, others which I've just kind of mentioned their names. Um, hopefully, you know, you're, you're, you're hanging in there, you're, you're trying to get this figured out. We are here to support you as best we can through this transition, try to give you different um, tools to support you through this process uh, of things we've used or we know that educators have used to really uh, support them. So what other tools are you using for uh, delivering that instructional information to your students? How are you delivering that content? We've talked about platforms, um, but now what tools are you using to kind of help students understand that information? Let us know in the comments below and we'll be back soon to talk about some assessment tools. Have a good rest of your day.